Hey guys, W0EA again for another video. Uh, what we've been working on today is a multiband uh, trap uh, dipole. Uh, my intention is to have 80, 40, and 30 on uh, one antenna since I've got my hex beam for uh, 20 and above. Uh, so I'm going to show you the traps that I made. Um, I used the uh, coax trap design app. Um, I have a link to that in the description and uh, blog post, I guess, if I put one together. Um, to uh, determine, anyway, use that app to determine the uh, number of turns and all that good stuff. And uh, so here's what the traps look like. These are made on an uh, inch and a quarter, um, very thin wall PVC pipe, I believe. Uh, I don't recall the actual number. It's like 1170 or something. It's not Schedule 40. This is much thinner than that. Um, you can find this at the hardware store. I guess they still sell it at Menards and stuff, so they probably have it at Lowe's and Home Depot as well. Um, uh, so basically, uh, you wind it the number of turns, and then connect the ground or the uh, braid to the center conductor of one on one side, and then you have on one side you have the center conductor, and the other side you have a braid coming out that's not connected to anything. Okay, and that makes a parallel tuned circuit, so it's a trap. And uh, what I have here is the MFJ antenna analyzer, and uh, it will tell us what the resonant frequency of these traps are, um, which is pretty cool. So here's one of the 30 meter traps. So uh, the idea is to make the trap resonant on a frequency uh, slightly below your operating point. Uh, that makes it uh, the highest or lowest loss possible. Uh, so here's a 30 meter one. It's designed for about 9.5 megahertz or so. Um, I'm not sure how critical it needs to be, but uh, I mean I'm within one or 200k, so I will say it's good. So what we have here, this is just a, call, a couple or I guess it's one turn of wire that's hooked up to here. So we're gonna act, this is act, the antenna analyzer acting as a, a grid dip meter. Uh, so if I put the coil kind of in that loop there, and then uh, I can pan down here a little bit. There we go. So we turn the tune uh, knob till we see a dip in the SWR, and that is that will indicate a tune or circuit uh, resonance. And either I've disconnected a wire inside there or <laughs> something happened. Let's see. No, that's still connected. Let's. Oh, there we go. You have to kind of play with the coupling of this little the loop here. There we go. If it's coupled too much, it won't work. So all I did, all I did was stand the. Uh, and the coil on end so it wasn't so coupled in there so well. Okay, so now we can see that as we tune down here, the SWR drops dramatically, so we've got resonance around 9.6 megahertz, which is exactly where we wanted it. So we put the other 30 meter one in there, and it's gonna be pretty close. About 9.4 megahertz, so a little bit different, but that's not a big deal. Um, it's going to represent a high impedance to the 30 meter wire no matter what. Pretty cool. And uh, since I've got this oops, got this 40 meter one here, we can look at that too. And that'll be resonant down here. Um, here, about 6.5 megahertz. So That's pretty cool. I wasn't quite sure how to do this. I looked up online how to make this little grid dip circuit thing, I guess, and uh, it just works. So. Uh, if anybody else wants to make some traps, coaxial traps, that's how you do it. Uh, this is the RG174 coax. Um, it's a little bit thicker, I think, than the stuff on the on the uh, application that does the calculations for you. Uh, so you got to play with it a little bit. But not too hard to make at all. I was really impressed. So we'll see how it works when it's in the antenna. Thanks.